Good morning. Let's talk Liberty audience. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're having an awesome day. Oh, I'm a little out of focus there. That's all right. If I stay right there, that's the sweet spot right there. Hope you're having an awesome day. I am so blessed to join you this Thursday, October 7th. See if I can jump on and see who's watching. If you're watching, drop a comment on whatever, whatever platform you're watching from. I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't already, go ahead and grab your bubblies or whatever your beverage of choice is. I've been on a raspberry bubbly kick for some time. I need to get a hold of some cherry bubbly. So if you have access to cherry bubbly and you'd like to send me a case, ah, that's wonderful. Send me a private message. I'll give you my address. And you can make this little guy really happy. All right, well, we have an awesome show for you today. I'm going to go a little bit in a different direction with the memes. I do have some memes, um, but I also I want to incorporate more video. I think uh, that's kind of the direction that the show is headed. You know, we're definitely going to keep doing memes. They're hilarious. So keep sending those all my loyal uh, meme ninjas. You know who you are. Um, keep sending those. They're, they're awesome. They're going to be a part of the show. But we are going to start also supplementing that with video. So if you have in your in your time. I'm talking to you know all the people that feel like they're partnered with the show. You know who you are again, because you know you can sew into this broadcast in multiple ways. If you if Let's Talk Liberty has been a blessing in your life, if if what we if what we're doing has touched your life and you want to be a part of it, obviously you can sew financially and and support us in that way. But there's tons of ways you can help, right? You can uh, share broadcast, which is a which really helps us reach new people. I got you know every time we get these encouraging messages about someone's life that's been changed by Jesus through this broadcast, it just fills our, you know, sails with wind. It, it, it really gets us motivated to, to remember why we're doing this in the first place. And, uh, and if you want to be a part of that, you know, sharing on other platforms and helping distribute the show, that's a great way. Sending us content, you know, if you find an interesting video or a controversial video, uh, email it to us, drop it, drop it in a Facebook message or, or just in our way because that can fuel the content as well. And, uh, and, and if you're interested to hear our perspective on it, well, it's a win-win. So send it our way and it might make it into the broadcast. All right, let's get started here. So today, hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, hold on. Today, we're gonna look at how to encounter the Lord during worship. Let me go ahead and do a screenshot for all the for the thumbnail out there. Thank you, Bubbly, for proudly, unofficially sponsoring this broadcast. Fish, appreciate you. How to encounter the Lord during worship? Now, I think this is such a um, I, this is just such a critical message. So, if if you, you know, m maybe you um, grew up in a conservative environment where worship's kind of tame, you know. Or just standing there. I want to just wreck that because because you're not doing it right. There's a right way to worship, and you and this 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 message is in you know undoubtedly going to offend a certain spirit. And I'm not here to condemn you ever on this broadcast. We're never here to make you feel bad. Like that's not our goal. But the truth can make you feel bad. What part of you is feeling bad would be my, would be my uh, question. Is it the spirit or is it the flesh? See, if you're walking in the spirit, the things that we're teaching, when they're, when they're, when they're of the spirit of the Lord, now you have to take the, always take what I'm teaching to scripture. If it doesn't line up with scripture, well then don't accept it yourself. That's critical. We say that a lot, but it, we should say that every broadcast. Look, if what I'm teaching is not confirmed inwardly by the Holy Spirit through the testimony of God's word, then you you know, throw it out. And a lot of stuff we, sh we talk on the broadcast is, you know, totally uh, my opinion. <laughs> and it can help you. Hopefully it can help you. Like the Apostle Paul, he says, well, I'm, I'm a man filled with the Holy Spirit, so I think my opinion means something. 
But um, but yeah, you know, but w- when it's the scriptures, when I'm when it when it's teaching, when it's when it's biblical teaching, and the anointing is there to help you, your spirit is receiving. Your flesh may be fighting that thing. Your flesh may hate the lesson, but let your spirit drive. Walk by the spirit of God. This will help you so much. Okay, let me see here. Yeah, no, not getting signal on my phone, so I won't be able to see comments, unfortunately. But um. What I will do after the broadcast is I'll go and respond. If you guys have any questions on the comments, I'll go and look. I'll go and read your comments, so you can you can rest assured you're not being ignored because I I deeply value what you're saying. So, so the anointed message from a servant of God is going to bless your spirit and offend your flesh. So if if, if you if you have an offense, just because you have an offense doesn't mean you're right. Okay, just just you. You're going, to have to, you're going to have to have some way, a strong way, a reliable way to settle those kinds of disputes. Am I offended because my spirit has a check? Like, is it, is it offensive to the Lord? Or is it offensive to my flesh? And if you don't have a rational, objective way to solve that, you're in trouble. And for the Christian, the rational, objective way to solve that dispute is the Word of God. If somebody teaches something... And you're like, mm, gosh, that was like rough, or that really rough, you know, rustled my feathers. If you can go to the Word, you see the Word separates and divides soul from spirit, right? So what's you, what's God? It shows you the difference. And so in the Word is, where we're, is, is what we're building our life on. The Word is our foundation. It's the, it is the dispute settler. And the Spirit, of course, guides you into all truth. So being filled with the Spirit, you know, the Word as an academic exercise is not going to, is going to also be a problem. You need to have, the Word is a spiritual entity, a reality. Okay, the Word is Jesus. He is living, alive and active. His words are spirit and they are life. So it's, it, it needs to be spiritually discerned. So a lot of people will approach the scriptures academically and that leads to all sorts of it leads to a powerless Christianity. But if you can learn to, to invite the Holy Spirit to guide you into truth, that word becomes the dispute settler for all these sorts of topics. And it's a wonderful thing. So again, I, what I'm going to say is there is, a, there is a right way to worship. <laughs> and if you, you know, well, everybody, everybody worships in their own way. Um... No, those, those who are going to worship the Father worship in spirit and in truth. There's a right way to worship. And the Bible actually is pretty clear about it. And form, external form, is important. It's not, it's not you know, yeah, and I realize there are different seasons. There are different expressions of worship. There's worship where you're on your knees and you're soft before the Lord and silent. I, I get that. But if you if, if if you're if you're in a church or if your if your church experience looks like you go to church and you stand quietly, I'm telling you, friend, you're not doing it right. You're not doing it right. And again, that might offend you. But if it this is important, this is one of the most important messages. Everybody's different. There are going to be differences in the expression. But there are some there are some foundational things that you need to learn about worship if you want to encounter the Lord during worship. Because the Lord has outlined instruction. Again, the instruction manual has what it's supposed to look like, what it's supposed to sound like, what it's supposed to be like. And if you let that guide your worship, you'll always encounter the Lord during your worship. And you're supposed to because the presence of the Lord changes everything. A lot of people just, for whatever reason, their upbringing, they grew up in an environment, a real real uptight environment or a real like dry environment, and they've carried that with them with their walk with the Lord. Well, you got to, you got to decide, are you going to, you know, for, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. If the Lord says this is what it's supposed to look like, no matter what, no matter what my comfort level, that doesn't matter. (laughs) I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do to glorify God. In faith, I walk. Now, the grace is there when you step out. So I'm going to explain that. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. First, we got some funny memes and stuff and some funny videos. I found this really funny video I want to share with you guys about COVID-19 from a comedian who I think is truly funny, Jim Brewer. We'll get right into it. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me get into some of these memes. First, of course, let's hear from woke Jesus because woke Jesus pretty much is, you know, a voice for today. 
And he says, the reason I eat with tax collectors and prostitutes is because I fully support what they do. And besides, who am I to judge? <laughs> I get this all the time. People believe that the state is a legitimate institution and that tax collecting is a good thing and you ought to, you ought to you know, support it. And the Bible over and over again says, he, like the Jews, the Holy Spirit that's writing the scriptures is literally saying that Jesus hung out with tax collectors and sinners to make a point that like even the worst, <laughs> the worst practicing, the people that were practicing the worst things, he even pursued them in his love and in his grace and his mercy. But don't for one minute buy that he accepted their lifestyle and endorsed what they were doing. Shall we pay taxes to Caesar? He doesn't say yes. Read that carefully what he says. Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, which begs the question, what is Caesar's? Not my property. Why, why you know, God, God tells you to share what you have. So the, 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 the Christian worldview is a worldview of using the word, even though it's got a bad rap, of capitalism. You might not like that. It's a combination of capitalism and communism. And this is where the two worlds, the two sides of the brain or whatever, the, two, the left and the right, the, the two worlds collide because they don't understand this. It's foundationally capitalistic and expressionally communistic. What do I mean by that? I just made that up, by the way. It sounded pretty cool. Foundationally, meaning the actual environment is you own your own property. Remember in the, in the book of Acts, it says they, the believers, the early believers, actually viewed what they had, their property, as not their own. You see, that there, there's, there's those two worlds colliding. So the Holy Spirit acknowledged it was, in fact, their property. See, socialism claims, and communism claims, you don't own anything. The state owns everything which is not biblical. No, you have property according to God's word. That's why thou shalt not steal makes sense. It presupposes private property, right? The believers, what they had, they in their own view counted it as not their own. That's that expression of communism. Hey, come take, take from me whatever you need. That's that sort of thing. But it was, a, they were deciding their own property. The Holy Spirit was acknowledging it was their property. That's capitalism. They were deciding, by, based on their free will, okay, which is still capitalism, they were deciding to engage in what we might call communism, like sharing what they had with others. So that's kind of the, the, the great misunderstanding is just people looking at it from, from both sides. Capitalism doesn't mean greed. It just means you have the freedom to choose what you do with your property. And then communism doesn't mean generosity if it's forced. But if it's voluntary, obviously it's generous. <laughs> You know, if you had the, you, if you force it on a society, you're breaking God's law. It's going to fall apart. You can't force morality. Hopefully that helps you. Famous believers last words. So I'm, I'm switching over to some of the believers in, throughout history to contrast. If you've been watching these series, I've gone through about six or something famous atheist last words, and they are dark and grim. And so I wanted to get some famous believer's last words in there. This is Ignatius of Antioch. Not exactly his last words, but he, you know, the thing about Christians, because you can read the Apostle Paul and Jesus as well, they know they're going to their death and they're speaking life and victory and hope. And so this is Ignatius of Antioch, he writes this letter and he says, let me be food. Uh, he's on his way to the Colosseum to be shredded by like bears and tigers and stuff, okay? This is not a good, you know, this is a, this is not a, um, a, a pleasant, I should say, um, time to be a Christian in, 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 the, in early uh, Christianity. So if you remember the Roman Colosseum, so they'd literally feed Christians to wild beasts. Okay, this is the context. But the perspective, I want you to see, it is actually transformed by the grace of God. It's actually transformed into a, a, the most positive thing. Martyrdom for the martyrs, if you're not a martyr, it's not going to make sense to you. But for the martyrs, there's such a grace on the call of God on their life that they enjoy, that they experience great victory. Like Stephen, recorded in the Bible, was not having a bad day when those stones were hitting him. He was looking at Jesus standing by the right hand of the Father, welcoming him into glory. So just understand that the grace of God transforms every situation 
into a joyful situation because you always have his presence and in his presence is fullness of joy. This is what Ignatius writes, let me be food for the wild beast for they are my way to God. Again, I'm not saying this is for everybody. Don't, don't, don't hear this with a, with a religious spirit and say, oh, everybody needs to do this. But this guy had a calling on his life and the path was made clear that this is the way he was called to glorify God. Just like Jesus told Peter, you're going to glorify me in this way, through crucifixion. And of course, Peter's last words are beautiful. We'll get to those soon. But uh, not in this broadcast, but you'll just stay tuned. For they are my way to God. I am God's wheat and shall be ground by their teeth so that I may become Christ pure bread. Pray to Christ for me that the animals will be the means of making me a sacrificial victim for God. What, what a wild perspective. He wanted the better resurrection through the sharing in Christ's sufferings. Not having a bad day. Clarity, focus of mind. You know, all those atheists, their last words are confusion, darkness, stumbling around, groping around, despair, great hopelessness, fear, terror. These Christians, as they look right into the face of the end, which they know is not the end, right? That's the whole point. They know death has been defeated. They look right into that thing and they're like, yeah, bring it on. <laughs> what do you want? What camp do you want to be in? I'd like to be in the Christian camp. That's why I'm a Christian. Hey, Ronald Reagan tells us, we could say that the government spends money like drunken sailors, but that would be unfair to drunken sailors because the sailors are spending their own money. So there was a time in even politics, there was a time in politics where politicians were, 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 were sort of honest about the nature of the state, especially the early, the founders. We've lost that. Now, now, now look at, you know, they think they're so noble. They're doing such, they're public service. They're doing such a great job. You know, it, it's, it's absolutely absurd. Okay, next thought this was interesting. Depopulation th through forced vaccination, the zero carbon solution. This was from an article back in 2011. So, thanks for sending that in, Buck. Found that really interesting. Oh, you also sent me a video that I didn't load today. The video of that nurse was great. I love that video. This is from a Michelle Obama quote. The socialists are just hilarious. If you look at their life, they're a walking contradiction. And again, by socialist, I'm talking about the political stance. So, you know, the political stance that it is the state's responsibility and the moral obligation of the state to forcibly take money from people and redistribute it, to steal and redistribute it. But the, re you know, the, it's such a corrupt system because those who are advocating for it are living absolute contradictory lives to what they're saying. How can you follow somebody like this? Someone is going to have to give up a piece of their pie so others can have more. Look at her pie. <laughs> like, how can you follow people like this? How can you get excited? Oh, well, she's, you know, she's, she's a strong woman and she's, she's well-spoken. She's articulate. Yeah, but she's a liar. <laughs> you know, she is a, a walking contradiction. She is a hypocrite. This is not, how can you follow someone like this? Seriously. And they're all over the place. This is 2019, Barack and Michelle Obama's 29 acre, $14 million mansion. By the way, I am not saying that it's not good to have a $14 million mansion. You know, there's nothing wrong with acquiring wealth. There's nothing wrong with having property. What's wrong is to act like you're a saint come to save the world and you know you really are you feel so morally superior because you're preaching this message of other people need to give up their stuff so that this poor can have more meanwhile you got a 14 million dollar mansion just stop don't you know i'd rather you just own i'm blessed i have a 14 million dollar mansion that that's a much better thing to say than to than to ride this high horse and act like you care about the poor so much because you could you know it's not moral it's not, you know, you're not awesome if you're really generous with other people's money. First, be generous in your own life, and then you can encourage others. And encourage others does not mean steal it from them through the state, just for the record, in case you're wondering. Video 
that's a reminder to me to play the video that I won't forget. So again, Buck, unfortunately, I didn't load up that video you sent me, that downloaded video, which was really good. It was a nurse. I'll just tell you about it. Maybe I'll play it next week. But she basically just goes on a quick rant about the about the insanity of the unvaccinated needing to be vaccinated to protect the vaccinated. But the way she says it is so is so brilliantly worded. She used protected and unprotected. So the unprotected need to be protected so that the protected can be protected from what did, you know, it's just, she says it in such a good way. It's so, it's so clear. It exposes the, the, the fraud. If it really worked, why do you need us to get it? Come on. If it worked, if you're protected, then you're protected. That's the way it works. So leave us alone. Okay. Let me go, um, load up this video. I, I think this first video, it's about, yeah, maybe I can see comments. Yeah, I can. Hold on. Yeah, there it is. Helen, I can see your comment. Let me just read real quick. I'm a babe in Christ and I have so much anxiety and confusion, so much in my heart when I read the Bible, my mind goes other places. And I have to come back to it and rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. But I don't know. Yeah. And, Amen. We're going to we're going to pray for you, Helen. Amen. Thanks for tuning in. I hope these broadcasts help you. You know what? And see, I'm coming out of focus when I do that. I got to stay like right in that sweet spot right there. That's pretty good. One thing I'll just encourage with you, you know, and, and I'm going to read your whole uh your whole message there carefully. So I pull everything out of it and then maybe um, next broadcast I'll approach it, you know, directly. It's just really small on the screen, so it's hard for me to, to see. But uh, one thing that pop, pops out is don't be condemned. You're a babe in Christ. The, the beginning of Christianity, which is, which is true every day, by the way, is to rest in the finished work of Jesus. Don't, don't look at all the things you have to do to make your life great. Look at all, look at all the ways Jesus is working to save you. He is strong. The, 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 the thought in a Christian's mind should not be, what am I doing to be saved? The thought in a Christian's mind is, what is Jesus up to? Am I strong enough to be saved? No. Is he strong enough to save me? Am I good enough to be blessed? No. Is he faithful to keep his covenant of blessing over my life that I had nothing to do with? It's all about him. It's all about him. And if you can, even from an early age in Christ, if you can learn to keep your eyes on Jesus and, and understand what that means, it's not to think about like, like the, you know, have a chosen episode in your mind and see him, which is fine. That, that, that can help too. When you keep your eyes on Jesus, that statement, what it's talking about is you're, is you're relying and trusting and looking to him for all the issues of life. You're casting all your burdens on him because he cares for you. Your understanding that the Lord is your shepherd, therefore you shall not lack. He's your provider. He's your wisdom. He's everything. You're not worried about tomorrow. You're not worried about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink or your body, what you'll put on. You're living this carefree life in Christ. And I know that sounds irresponsible. The world hates it, by the way. The wisdom of the world, which is when, when you are early in Christ, sometimes it takes a while to get rid of the mindsets of the world. Just like when Israel came out of Egypt, they were still kind of like going back to Egypt. And at 40 years in the desert, and I'm not saying it's going to take 40 years. 40 is this, is this uh, idea of complete judgment. And there's a lot of pictures of that in the scriptures. But I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying it's going to take you that long. But the principle is, it, it can, you know, some of these mindsets that we had in Egypt, they can linger. They can try to rise back up. We call it the flesh. Now that thing is dead. Make no mistake, when you walk through the waters of baptism, and if you haven't already, I'd encourage you to get water baptized as soon as possible. The, the Lord's commands are for you, not because they're religious and it's some kind of, you know, no, it's just to help you. And what water baptism does, maybe I'll do a whole broadcast on water baptism soon. In fact, my church locally here is doing a water baptism on October 10th. So it's a good time for me to, um, to do a teaching on it. Well, Water baptism cleanses your conscience from dead works. So it, 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 it's not just this 
outward expression of an inward change. No, there's a spiritual transaction. You know, Jesus doesn't ask you to do stuff because it's symbolic. <laughs> no, it's a real thing. It actually helps you. It helps you in your walk. A lot of Christians don't have victory because they just haven't done the basic things that Jesus told them to do. And it's not to condemn you. It's just to say those, those, things are, those things are avenues for great grace to fall in your life, for great power to flow through your life. That's how I would do it. And then, of course, the other gift, the promise of the Father, is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And so uh, I'll pray for you, Helen, that you would uh, just grow in that, receive that, grow in that, and be blessed in every way. We appreciate you uh, tuning in. So this video, this first video I want to play, uh, let me just make sure it's going to work here. Make it volume. Go big. <laughs> Video full screen. Yeah, here it goes. Okay, you can still hear me. And then I'm going to turn the desktop on so you can hear the desktop. Okay. I'm going to try to be quiet so you can hear this, but it's very funny. I want to thank all of you for uh, risking your lives to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you've had, wait, you're going indoors? <laughs> They're going indoors to a comedy event and people are on top of each other. The numbers, this is very dangerous. Are you gonna, <laughs> please tell me you're gonna quarantine before Memorial Day weekend, Charlie. <laughs> you can tell who's been vaccinated. They walk in, a lot of confidence. I've been vaccinated. <laughs> I'm afraid of COVID no more. <laughs> Got my second shot. Woo! <laughs> I'm gonna lick some metal. <laughs> 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 oh my God. This whole thing is crazy. It really is crazy. It's like Simon says every day, Simon says, put your mask on when you walk in a restaurant. <laughs> Simon says, sit down and take it off. <laughs> uh, every other week, you know, we have no rules and regulations. <laughs> From here on when we will decide who's essential. <laughs> we will decide who will be having barbecues. <laughs> and who can eat a muffin for your safety. <laughs>
<laughs> I swear to God, I went to a party today. <laughs> oh, let me get rid of this. Oh, gosh. That is hilarious. And so I want to make just a comment on that, by the way. So I love comedy, and I think you should too. Remember, laughter is the language of heaven. I think Jesus was, is very funny. I mean, obviously he was. And this is what one, one reason I hate the Bible apps is if you ever listen to them on audio, Jesus is super serious or even desperate all the time. Like, oh. it just bothers me. It bothers me so much because that's, that's not Jesus. Jesus is filled with the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy. He's filled with joy. You know, and... Uh, Jesus is also very funny, and, it, and once you hear the Lord's voice, a lot of the, you know, remember, we, we talk about this on this show, but I, I, won't, I want you to get this principle, especially in your scripture reading, even Sister Helen, what you were saying as you read the Bible, and so, sometimes reading the Bible can be confusing if you don't know the Lord's voice. So first, you, you know, first you're filled with the Spirit of God, you hear His voice, then He guides you in all, all truth. He brings to remembrance the things that He said, so it's a living process. So you have to hear, it doesn't say, my sheep read my words. Right, that my sheep hear my voice and they follow me, and in others they won't follow. Well, Jesus is very funny, and when you get that, a lot, you know, sarcasm, sarcasm came from the Jews. Uh, irony and, and, and comedy was largely born out of the, the Jewish culture. So, Jesus, of course, is, is a Jew, right? <laughs> like the Messiah is a Jew. That, that's, you know, first century Israel, that's who he is. And I mean, tax collectors and sinners liked him, liked hanging out with him. He was making people laugh everywhere he went. And you don't see that in the Bible app. And it's disappointing because it's not, it's not a true reflection. It's a religious expression of, of Jesus. Jesus is very funny. And, and a lot of what he's saying is sarcasm. You know, hey, remove that, uh, you might want to remove that speck out of, uh, you know, that log out of your eye before you try to remove the speck out of your brother's eye. Come on, bro. Like, but, but the tone, see, the tone matters so much, and we lose the tone when we listen to a religious work of art of Jesus. It's unfortunate, but it's, it's sort of, it's so painted our perception of what the Lord Jesus is like, it, it's a little disappointing. So you really need to, you really need to hear his voice. Hey, buddy, you guys want to come in and say hi? Come here, man. This is Sam. You ready to talk some liberty, bro? CJ, come here, man. Get over here, bro. Hold on. Can I press some buttons? You want to press some buttons? Well, no, you can't press buttons. Why? But look, you're on. Oh, you gotta come over here. Sit over here. There it is. Well, we already started that part. We're 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 in the show. We're in the here. Scoot over. Scoot over this way. I don't see it. I know you didn't see that part. That's okay. Daddy's in the middle of broadcast. Say hi. All right, we're talking about praise and worship. You guys like praising? You guys like singing? Singing songs of praise? We sing, we sing praise every morning, huh? In his presence, his fullness of joy. Okay, you boys, you want to go hit the children's room? Or you want to stay here with Daddy? Stay here with Daddy. Okay, well, we're getting into it. I forgot where I was at, but comedy is very important. So he, here's what I want to say about that. I had, I had an actual thing to say if you know you might not be like a pastor or a teacher but don't if you're a comedian if you're someone who you know a meme lord again if you can affect so much change you see how powerful that was just Jim Brewer being funny and mocking the spirit of antichrist in that German Nazi way just that just that was so powerful and if you notice it released so much truth just through making people laugh and the audience was, they had all that truth bottled up. The comedian can poke that thing. Now, I believe the pastors and ministers should always lead this, right? They should, they should be leading the fight. But when pastors and ministers aren't willing to do it, hey, I praise God that comedians will do it. And so I, anyway, I, it, was, it was interesting to watch how much, how much of that was bottled up. In fact, we're not going to watch the second video. That's for, that's a totally different topic. Hey, Mara Carr, blessings, sister. I see your comment, too. So I am seeing comments here. That's working. Buck, I see you. What do you see? On YouTube, YouTube. Yeah, I can see YouTube chat. When I'm full screen. When I'm not full screen, I can't see it. And I'm about to be not full screen for a while. So, but I will check back. All right, guys, you ready to get into the word? Let's do it, guys. Let's do it. So first, we're going to go here. 
and we're going to go full screen. Hold on. Hold on to your butts. And then we're going to go to main content. Now we're locked. So the word today is how to encounter the Lord during worship. And I said in the beginning, this is a controversial message because a lot of people, I witness it all the time. And I, I hope, if, if this is you, if I'm picking on you, I hope you'll tune in to the end. Let the Holy Spirit, yes, you can have some bubbly, but you can't talk during the broadcast, okay, guys? You got to honor it. Or I'm going to have to give out some kiss punches. And you know what that's like. You, get, bubbly. you want some bubbly? Hey, share with Sam. My pff, bubblies, gosh. It's like in your blood or something. <laughs> My goodness. Thank you, guys. Okay. If it's going to be too much of a temptation, you go back and... <laughs> or you stay with me. Stay with Daddy. How to encounter, how, how to encounter a, the Lord during worship. Now, some people are going to say, you know, I just have my style of worship. And people are different. And I'm going to say, okay, children, children, go, 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 right now, bud, right now, go, Sammy, go, lead the way, lead the way, go, 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 well, CJ's t talking, we can't be talking during the broadcast, it's distracting, Daddy's already distracted, <laughs> okay, so if you're talking during the broadcast, it's not going to help, no more talking, okay, love you, bro, how to encounter the Lord during worship, some people are going to say, how to have my own style, this is who I am. This is how I worship, you know, and I'm going to say, I'm going to say to you with humility and respect, get your instructions from the Bible. It will help you in every area of life. Worship is not an exception. I even saw this minister and he's very, he's a very famous minister. And he talks about how dancing in church is wrong. Like, I don't know how this guy because he's a, he's, a, he's a scholar of the Bible. Now, I'm, I'm harsh on teachers because they ought to know better. If you're going to teach something, you better, you better get your instruction from the Word of God. Why are you bringing in something that's not the Word of God? And I'm telling you, God's Word is filled with instruction on how to praise and worship. This is so important because if you can get this, praise and worship has become such a... It's, it's the first step in your walk with God. You enter his courts with thanksgiving in his, pres in his presence with praise. You're coming, he inhabits the praises of his people. If you want the presence of God, which is what the whole gift of Christianity is, what did Jesus come to restore? What is the gospel? What is the message of the cross? You being reconciled to God, enjoying his presence once again, being restored to the Father as a child. Wow, being redeemed by the blood of Jesus so that you can enjoy his presence. Well, in his presence is fullness of joy. How do you enter into his presence? With thanksgiving and praise. Praise and worship are such a critical part of your Christian experience. Every Christian should be praising and worshiping every day of their life. And I don't just mean, like, some people use it like, well, everything you do is worship. Yeah, th that's true, but there's also what the Bible talks about with worship and praise. It is adoration to the Lord. It's giving him glory. It's giving him thanks. It's using your mouth to proclaim his excellencies, to acknowledge the one who created everything. Praise and worship is a is a is not just this you make up the definition and then, you know, don't don't do that kind of stuff. Get your let the Bible define the Bible. Okay, we're going to get into some scriptures right now. They're going to bless your socks off. But I'm telling you, this this uh, key that I'm going to share with you today how to encounter the Lord during worship will radically change your life because He changes your life. And there is a way to encounter Him and it's praise and worship. You are meant to, your feelings are a huge part of who you are. Now they're not supposed to lead, but they are a huge blessing that is going to infuse your life with purpose, meaning, fulfillment, your cup runs over, there are so many scriptures that speak to the feelings. My cup runs over, right? I, my joy is filled. My joy is complete. There are so many. Oh, we want to silence that spam call. There's so there's so there's so feelings are such a beautiful gift from God, and if you are doing it right, praise and worship is a is a way. It's it's the way to get your feelings in line with your spirit to actually make your feelings reflect the truth of what's going on in reality. 
And so you should have the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience. All those things are most clearly experienced as you're living a life of praise and worship, walking in the Spirit of God. And there's so many scriptures to get to. I'm only going to get to a handful today. This really is a this really is a several part series. We'll come back on this because there's so many New Testament commands for you to do this. In Ephesians, in Galatians, you have you have these commands. In Ephesians, the one comes to mind. You know, sing songs to the Lord. Make spiritual songs. Sing hymns and spiritual songs. Make melody in your heart to the Lord. You know, walk in the Spirit. All these commands that you have in the New Testament epistles, they're not just suggestions. They're commands because it's going to help you. As a Christian, the commands of God are not burdensome. They're not heavy. They don't weigh you down. They lift you up. They give you life. You know, God is not saying, you better do this. He's saying, you better receive my love, receive my power, receive my grace. The command of God, it changes nature from the old covenant to the new covenant. You have to get that. The, the tone changes from, from, you better do this. You have to do this to, I am going to give you everything. Receive everything. Receive my supply. Receive my grace. Receive my blessings. Receive my promises. It's a beautiful thing. The commands of God are beautiful. They're, they're the way. And Jesus says, if you love me, you'll keep my commands. And people with a religious spirit hear that and say, oh, I, I, better, I better shape it up and I better work hard. No, his commands are not burdensome. They're not heavy. Not, it's not like the world. It's not, the, it's not that system. They're light and easy. And they bring you life. They supply you with grace. Okay, so let's get into these scriptures that are going to bless your socks off. And then I'm going to give you the key to how to encounter the Lord during worship. Psalm 150 says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. This is not, this is not conservative. <laughs> okay, this is not controlled. Think about the tone. The Psalms are the place you're going to find the most clear instruction for praise and worship. Why? David, a man after God's own heart. Why did God call him that? I believe it's because of David's heart for praise, which is why he wrote hundreds of psalms. Hundreds of songs. In the middle of the storm, David learned the key of praising God. And, and, and we're going to pull out some keys from the life of David here. But he's the guy you're going to want to look to when you think praise and worship and you want to find instruction in the Scripture. Psalms is your place to start. Now, we're going to the New Covenant as well to... to, to really solidify this, but just most of our scriptures today are from the book of Psalms because that's where you're going to find instruction for praise and worship. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Notice what praise is. Praise is all about the Lord. It's not about you. It's not about your circumstances. It's not about your feelings. It's not about what's going on. You, you are not praising God because you feel like it. This is, this, is the secret. this is the secret to praise and worship that I want to share, and I just can't, I can't help but share it now. Feelings have nothing to do with praise and worship. What ha it, doesn't, it doesn't drive. But what happens is, when you praise and worship like you're commanded to, like you're supposed to by the Spirit, when you do that, your feelings catch up. And they align, and you have the experience of God's presence. And you experience fullness of joy. But so many people don't feel like lifting their hands. They don't feel like shouting unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. They don't feel like making a joyful noise. So they don't. They stay quiet. They stay conservative. They do this guy. And yeah, I'm making fun of you to help you, to bless you. Get up out of your seat. Shout to the Lord. I don't care if people around you aren't doing it. Why do you care? Why are you, why are you bound by the fear of man? Why does it matter what they're doing? You're in the presence of God. You know in the presence of God, you better act like a fool. You better lose control in a godly way. But you, you better respond to the reality of the king. Who are you to let what that guy over there is doing influence your, your worship and praise? Who are you to stand and, 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 and be so bound by the fear of man and not want to make, you know, you better, like King David said, you haven't seen nothing yet, baby. When she said, you're, how dignified are you when he was just losing it in worship, having a blood feast? If you imagine, they're just sacrificing and blood's everywhere. And he just, he's just the presence of God. Got the Ark of the Covenant back. He's so blessed to be in the presence of God, to have, this, to have this wonderful God and to enjoy His presence, that He's losing all dignity. And his, his uh, Saul's daughter's picking on him. And he said, you haven't seen nothing yet. 
I'm about to, you think this is crazy. You just watch, watch where I'm headed. Again, there are, there are instructions here. Praise him, praise him for his mighty deeds. The reason you praise is about God. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's for him, what he's done, what he's doing, who he is. When you become God-focused, you receive God's power. You receive God's presence. When you're you-focused, when you're, when you're focused on you, your circumstances, what's going on, your problems, there's no power there. The grace is found in the place of faith. And the place of faith comes by hearing him of the word. The word is living and active. It's Jesus. It's, what he, it's who he is. You know, we don't, we don't love God and we don't honor God. And we're, we're, not, we don't, we're not in love with God because of what he gives us. We're in love with God because for who he is. He is worthy of it all. He deserves every ounce of your vocal cords. He deserves every, every fiber of your being should be released to magnify the Lord of glory. And if your worship doesn't look like that, repent. Repent. People, people go to sports, you know, sports events and go, yeah! Oh, I've seen people lose their minds because of a ball crossing a line. Are you serious? In the Lord of glory, who made everything, who stands above it all, who by the breath of his mouth, universe after universe came into existence, the sun came out because of his word, and you're going to give him the cheap, pathetic, holy Holy, holy, get out of here. Get out of here. Leave that foolishness behind once and for all. I want this Sunday, I want you to freak your church out. You should freak your church out. Your worship should, ca should cause people to enter into worship. Your response to what, who God is and what he is doing should cause people to enter into worship. You should not have a tame, it, it, tame worship is not worship. It's not. It's something else. You can't be spilling bubbly, man. That's one of the cardinal sins, okay? Next time that happens, you're, you know, you're going to spend at least a year in children's prison. <laughs> spilling bubbly. Ah. Praise him with the trumpet sound. Oh, I'm sorry. And praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him according. What does that mean? Think about what that means. How do you praise him? Is it according to your feelings? According to your circumstances? According to what Jim and Sue are doing next to you? According to what, how, your, how, how even your pastor is praising? Well, how do you praise God? You praise him according to his excellent greatness! Exclamation point. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and, and dance. For that guy who says, don't dance in church. Just read your Bible, bro. It's not hard. Read your Bible before. And I'm talking to teachers. I'm not trying to be mean to you. But a teacher ought to know better. This guy goes on, a, on, on TV, you know, on an interview. And is te teaching why you shouldn't dance in church. And why, and why what David did was, was, not a, a, was not a picture of what you should do in church. Come on. Get out of here. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strength. You know, people try to steal glory from God, and it bothers me. You can see I'm bothered because it bothered me. God deserves all the glory. He's going to get every ounce of it. He's going to get every ounce of it. Praise him with sounding cymbals. Praise him with loud, clashing cymbals. Praise is not tame. It's not tame. It is wild. You're in a love dance with the creator of the universe. Act like it, according to his excellent greatness. This goes on to say, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's keep going. That's Psalm 150. Gosh, that's, that's, that is the, that's the ending psalm. That's the end of the matter. Psalm 100, serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Come into his presence with singing, with gladness in your heart. You begin, to, you begin to thank the Lord. You thank the Lord for her, who He is. Don't look at your circumstances. Praise has nothing to do with you. has everything to do with Him. Oh, that's twice. You've spilled bubbly twice now, buddy. That means when, we, when you get home, you're going you're gonna to have to work off your debt slavery for, I don't know, what, six years, seven years? I have to figure out the exact math, but 
It's not looking good for you, bub. <laughs> bubbly twice. Spill bubbly twice, <laughs> this guy. Come into his presence with, with gladness and singing. Psalm 100, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give him thanks, bless his name. This is who God is. Does, he deserves every bit of it. Psalm 95, oh come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise. What does a joyful noise look like? Woo, yeah, come on somebody. I don't know, what does a joyful noise look like? You make a joyful noise. Do it at work, do it in the middle, do it, do it wherever you're at. Look like a fool for the Lord. Be God's fool. Let him exalt you. Why are you worried about what this person's doing? Karen's next to you going, hmm, can't believe this radical, undignified, irresponsible, disrespectful young man, young woman. Be, be okay with losing the respect of people. Be okay with people not understanding. And again, you don't have to feel this. See, people think, oh, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I don't really feel like raising my hands. You know what a hypocrite is? A hypocrite is someone who acts not like who they truly are. Who are you truly? Well, you've been made in Christ. You've been made one spirit with the Lord. You are like Jesus. You are in the presence of God at the Father's right hand. Do you think, do you think you are being a hypocrite by praising like the Bible tells you to. God, remember, Jesus is the Word of God. He wrote all this. This is Jesus. This, he is the living Word. He infuses every word of this. And he's saying, make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are, are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands form the dry land. You look at creation and it speaks of the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God. You look all around you, you see the majesty of the King and it brings you to a place of praise and thanksgiving and worship. You praise like that, you'll feel the presence of God. Oh, you want to draw? You got to find a pen. Go into the children's room and get a pen, okay? No. Oh, over there. On the desk over there. Go get a pen. Get CJ one, too. Yeah. Get CJ a piece of paper. Here, broski. You can do some drawing for daddy, okay? Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Praise is a daily thing. You tell of his salvation. You testify. You, you tell of your testimony. Speak of his salvation. Look at this. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the peoples are worthless idols, but the Lord made the heavens. When you are worshiping, it is about the object of your worship. That is where the power is. And who are you worshiping? What are you worshiping? If you're worshiping God, your physical manifestation of worship, your external manifestation and expression of worship needs to be according to his excellent greatness, not your human limitations. You know, our bodies, it, it's like our bodies can barely even, at a fraction of the, of the level the Lord deserves, manifest worship in a correct response. But we ought to try. <laughs> Amen. We ought to give we ought to we ought to give our whole body to this. Your hand was given to clap. Your hands were given to clap. Your hands were given to raise. Your mouth was given to shout. Your feet were given to dance. Get in his presence. Don't don't let the world and all that unbelief and all that dusty religion and all that fake Christianity. Don't let that stuff stop you from this amazing gift of his presence. Understand his presence inhabits, he inhabits the praises of his people. You want to feel God? You want to encounter the Lord? Then you need to make your body, and you're going to see in a second, it's not just your body, it's your soul too. You're going to, you need to make your body conform to the Lord's worship. It's, we're worshiping the King. It's, it's for him that we're doing it. And that will free you from yourself. It'll free you from the fear of man. You can just have fun with it. You'll, you'll end up enjoying life because you're just, you're just living for the king. Let them praise his name with dancing. Again, I just want to just highlight this. 
for that, you know, for that teaching out there that's like, you shouldn't be dancing in church. What? Who? What? What? What Bible are you reading? Let them praise his name with dancing, making melody to him with tambourine and lyre. Now, this is the soul part I want you to see. King David understood this. In Psalm 103, one of the most famous psalms, but this is, you'll find this in many psalms. You'll find this. Bless the Lord, O my soul. What's happening? By the Spirit of God, David is commanding his mind, will, and emotions, his soul, to bless the Lord. Because he feels like it. No, David's usually writing these in the middle of turmoil. He's like in war. His son's about to kill him with an army. He's under siege. Saul's after him. Like David's life is filled. He is a man of war, right? He, he is a man of great tribulation. Look at the life of David. Most of the Psalms are born out of like crazy circumstances. But he understood the key to the presence of God, which is why I believe he's a man after God's own heart. He understood that praise and worship had nothing to do with his circumstances or his feelings. His soul wasn't, wasn't driving. Your soul needs to basically shut up and listen to your spirit. And your spirit will be saying to your soul, bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless the Lord and all that is within me, not 10%. How much do you give at a sporting event? When you win a game of Monopoly, how excited do you get? When, you're, when you win a video game, when you see, when, I mean, there's so many times I've, I've seen what human bodies are capable of in, a, in so many ways. Rarely do I see it in church. What a, what a wicked thing. The human body expresses so much joy and elation at a ball game or at a, you know, whatever. And in church... What a wonderful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. Do you believe that? Because if you believe it, if you're, if you're worshiping God, what does that look like? What does that look like? And you might be saying, well, again, this is just a personal preference thing. This is just, no, look at these scriptures. They will fix you. You, if you aren't worshiping like this, you are broken in that way. Get fixed. Because a hypocrite is somebody who puts a mask on. Who you really are is this. This is who you really are by the Spirit of God, the Word of God, which dwells in you richly. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The Word of God, the living Word. This is who you really are. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Wow. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. This is the heart of worship. Worship the Lord where in the splendor of his holiness. Worship's about God. It's about who he is, what he deserves, how awesome he is, what he's done, what he's doing, all of his benefits, all of his promises, all of his characteristics, what he's created, the mountains, the seas, the universes, the stars, the heavens, everything that he's made, his power. Worship's about acknowledging that, ascribing to the Lord the glory due his name. Not what you feel like. Worship's not about you, it's not feelings. Again, I want you to freak your church out Sunday. I want you to freak your church out. It'll be really healthy, I promise. You'll see stuff happen. You'll see the youth come to life. You know, youth, youth fall away from boring churches because they know, children know that there's something. What do you, you, are, do you believe, I've seen people present the gospel in such a boring, dry way. I, don't, I question if they even believe it. I mean, they might have an academic understanding of it, but if you believe the gospel, how aren't you shouting? How aren't you screaming from the rooftops? How, are, how aren't you responding appropriately? Ascribe to the Lord the glory do his name. I'm preaching myself too, because Sunday I plan on just getting weird. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all day. Praise is an all day event. This is one of the keys to life. If you can get this, it's, it's probably number, it's, it's one of the foundational keys to life. Let his praise be filled. Let your mouth be filled with his praise all day. Let, let his glory fill your mouth all day. 
Let, let your life constantly speak of the greatness and goodness of God. This is Hebrews, New Testament. Through him, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. So I wanted to go to the New Testament. This isn't just an old covenant thing. The New Testament confirms this. The life of Paul. You see the apostles are on a, on a prison wall and they're praising the Lord. And they're singing a hymn and the anointing on that hymn is so strong the walls come crashing down. So, so this, is, this is a New Covenant established reality as well. And then I wanted to show you this just to encourage you. This is from Zephaniah 3. Why do we praise God? One reason. Why do we, why do we pray, pray? Let me ask you this. Why do we praise God like we're supposed to? With a loud shout, with a voice of triumph, with a, with a joyful noise, with dancing, with, with all that is within me, bless his name. Why do we do it like that? Because we're made in the image of our daddy. And children need to respond. And children need to emulate their daddy. Oh, beloved children, as beloved children, put on the characteristics of God. Meekness, humility, love, compassion. The Lord your God is in your midst. A mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. We are made in the image of God. In Christ, we've been restored as children of God to the image of our daddy, and we act like him. That, that, is, that is the why it looks like it, because that's how, if you, can, if you understood the joy of the Lord is your strength, if you understood what God is doing in heaven, he is rejoicing over you, he is celebrating, he is, he's not real calm and conservative. Praise God. He is wild. One of my favorite quotes from C.S. Lewis about in Narnia is Aslan is not safe. He's good, but he's not safe. And Aslan's a picture of Jesus in that book. Because people think Jesus is tame. They see him as real. Obviously, a fruit of the Spirit is self-control. We're not denying that. We're not denying that, but read the rest of the list. Love, joy. Yeah, right. Self-control means you're doing what you want to do. It doesn't mean that you're conservative and, 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 and tame. It means that you're doing what you want to do. Like you are, the spirit is in control of the self. Well, when the spirit stands in the presence of God, we know what that looks like. Holy, holy, holy forever, for eternity. That's what the presence of God draws out of a, draws out of a spirit. That it is, you praise God according to his excellent greatness. Not according to, you are so focused on the goodness and power and glory of God, it moves you, it absolutely, your soul is demanded to respond accordingly. And that looks a certain way. Now again, there are times where I've been broken before the Lord and I'm on my knees and I'm weeping and I'm, I, you know, but hey, those, those times of, 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 of softness, of silence, you know, you don't stay there. You don't stay there. You might enter in, in that place, but when you get into the presence of God, because he'll meet you in that place every time. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Well, the comforted person is in, that, is in the presence of God, being lifted up by the Lord, being exalted by the Lord. And he turns your mourning into dancing. He turns your mourning into dancing. So yeah, there's a place for it. I'm not saying that there's not. It's just not, it's not the state of the Christian, like the ongoing state. The ongoing state of the Christian is thanksgiving, praise, giving God the glory he deserves, responding in a way that makes sense in light of what's actually happened and who God actually is. So friend, if you've been a part of this deception, which I would just call the boring religious spirit in praise, and I see it all the time, and I'm not mad at you, there, that's a spirit. I'm not upset at you. I'm inviting you to get free from that thing once and for all. Act like you should. Self-control, remember. How does the Spirit respond? How does Holy Spirit respond to the Father? If, if you understand the dance that's been going on since the, since the beginning of everything, right? for eternity past, 
Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the triune love fest and dance, the party of love that had so much overflowing joy and love that the world was created. You were created out of the overflow of the joy and love that was found in the Trinity. And that, that's the dance that you've been invited to participate in. And people are going to look at that. People are looking at your worship and they're learning about what you really believe. And again, you're not living for people. Just understand when you live for God, an audience of one, when you're focused on the Lord and you respond appropriately, it encourages other people to act accordingly, to act in like fashion. Because your worship tells a story about what you believe about God what you truly believe, how you animate your body and your, and your mouth, how you, you know, and again, this is why if I'm in a bad mood, my, again, I could be in the middle of a fight with my wife and feel, and feel bad. This still applies. You can feel discouraged. You could have, you can be in the middle of a challenge, but you know what? Your worship's not about any of that. Your worship is about the Lord. Your worship is about him. Let me go back to this full screen so I can see these munchkincitos here. CJ, come this way. Come this way, bro. Publicly confess about your bubbly spilling, please, so we can move on. So that you might be healed. Just kidding. Show the picture, bro. What you got? What you get, man? Oh, look at this picture right here. Is that mommy and daddy? In church? Who, who are these people? Who's that one? Daddy. That's daddy. Who's this one? Mommy. Oh man, that is ble blesses that's me. What do you got, Sam? That's church right there. Fences. You got you're designing all sorts of fences and, and stuff. Paint, and I have to paint the cow. That's wonderful, bro. I love you. I love you guys. I'm so proud of you. Okay, let's get home to mommy. I encourage you to act like who you are. Don't be a hypocrite. Remember, a hypocrite, somebody who you know who's acting. Don't and remember. Feelings has nothing to do with who you are. How you feel is not who you are. How you feel is not who you are. You are like Jesus. You always have true north. You always have a place you can go and look. Keep your mind on Jesus. Think about Jesus. How do you know Jesus? He is the word of God. In his word, you find out, you find out all of this, all of his attributes, how he is, how he responds. And in the book of Psalms, you find out what praise and worship is supposed to look like. And it's pretty clear, by the way. What I read you today, I don't think you can come away with that like, praise the Lord, you know, all, you holy, all of you his saints, praise the Lord, bless his holy name. How, did you not read? With a loud voice, shout unto the Lord, make a joyful noise with all that is within you. You tell me that, praise the Lord, yeah, give, him, give him all the glory. You tell me that's all that is within you? No. That's silliness. That's like your leftovers. Again, what you do at the, at the, at the football stadium and the basketball game, when you, when you are so, you know, when the, when the ball crosses the line, you know, and your response, your response in church should make that look like just nothing. When you're, when you're in the presence of God in corporate worship, especially, now you worship all the time. I'm not just talking about Sunday. We, we looked at many scriptures. This is day to day. This is all day long, right? We looked at those scriptures. This is just, a, this is who you are. But corporate worship is a time, is a special time where we know that the presence of God, we know that when two or three are gathered in his name, there he is. And so corporate worship is just this special time to come in. And so many people get trapped in the fear of man. Oh, I don't want to look silly. I don't want to go to the front. I don't know. What, what will they think about me? What are you, why are you, why is your mind focused on what other people think of you? Stop it. Stop that. That's foolishness. You're going to stand before God one day. That He's all that matters. He, his opinion matters. That's it. Full stop. His opinion matters. Live for him. Fear the Lord. Don't fear man. Fear the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And as you do, you will worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Because you'll give him everything. All that is within you will bless his holy name. I pray this has blessed you today. I'm going to uh, wrap this up. If you have an awesome praise or worship song that's been touching you, send it my way. I'd love to hear it. 
I'm always looking for I'm always looking for anointed worship. Let's talk liberty today.com. Shoot us a message anytime. Like I said earlier, you can give financially, but also you can give by sending us content, by sending us videos, by sending us questions. All of those things help. We are, we are, as season two for Let's Talk Liberty is a moving out time. Now we're still trying to figure out some technical issues with the live feed before we fully release some of the strategies we have. Um, but for now, we can begin building the, the program through content, again, videos, questions, prayer requests, what's on your heart, what you're seeing, what you're hearing, how the broadcast is touching you, testimonies from your life. All those things will help us greatly. So please don't just sit back and just be a, don't just be a viewer, participate. I want you to participate. Go to letshotlibertytoday.com and you can drop us a message there. We'd love to hear from you. Have a blessed day. Lord, I bless your people with a deeper revelation of what it means to worship you, to give you praise, to give you honor, to give you glory. Let us be people after your own heart, Father, that worship you all day long, every day. Let us be people who have continually have your praise on our lips, that continually have your glory in our hearts, that we are constantly proclaiming the excellencies of you that we are constantly wrapped up and caught up and focused on the greatness of our God, that we don't live by the, and bound by the fear of man, but Lord, that we are so swept up in the fear of the Lord, we are so swept up in your presence, that we live according to that, and we worship according to your excellent greatness, not according to our circumstances, but according to you, Father. I pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Bless your people with great grace. See you guys soon. I think I fixed the outro video, so we have volume now. Sorry about that. Bless you. Have an awesome day. And hey, we're coming up to a weekend, so I won't see you till Monday, but I love you much. We're praying for you. We honor you, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Hey, everybody. Gather around. I'm here to give you anything you like. You want free college? energy mortgages <laughs> whatever you like you have come to the right place why i'll tell you why who can take your money who can take your money with a twinkle in their eye a twinkle in their eye take it all away and give it to some other guy the government the government the government can the government can and who can tax the sunrise To run a business and collect up all the fees the government And who can give a bailout? Who can give a bailout? And tell us to behave. Tell us to behave. And make the founding fathers roll over in the grave. The government. The government. Oh, the government can. The government can. And the government can cause and mix it up. Well, as I make it all taste good. Make it all taste good. The government. Yeah.